Good morning, everyone. As always, put your cross on first. If you are a follower of Christ, do it every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for giving me another chance to get this right, to grow closer with, to you, to minister to your people, to spread the word, to do whatever it is that you want me to do, to be whatever it is you want me to be. Lord Jesus, I ask you to touch me in a special way this morning. Use me as you seem fit to bring forth whatever it is that you want me to bring forth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, I was reading in Matthew today, uh, this morning. And Jesus is talking about to be watchful, basically. Be watchful. Be watchful. He said, nobody knows the hour or the minute, not the angels, not the son, but the father. Jesus don't even know. It's like he just he's just waiting for his orders. You know, I, I always talk about a visualization. I make music. And when I make music, I visualize how would I do a music video or something like that. And I visualize Jesus in heaven sitting around the throne, him and his angels. Then out of nowhere, God's like, it's time. Go get my children. And I can see Jesus coming, leaving. Anybody ever played Final Fantasy? And they had this they had this special move that they got, right? And a big asteroid comes and hits the earth. Let's put it this way. When Jesus comes with his angels, there's going to be a light coming. You're going to see it from afar. Then when he get here, he's going to get there and he's going to open his mouth. And all the works of darkness are going to be destroyed. And guess what? Guess what that means? If you are in darkness, you're going to be destroyed too. And if you are in the light, you're going to be brought up to the light. It's your choice. Right now is the time to get ready. Right now is the time to get ready. Like I talked about yesterday, there's no excuses. No excuses. You can't use the blame game. You can't say... The only reason I ain't become a Christian is because of this, because of that. You got your own free will. That's one thing God gave every human being on this earth is free will to do as they please. You know, you can serve God as you want to, or you can choose not to serve God. You can live for Christ if you want to, or you can choose not to live for Christ. It's your choice. It's your choice. Like I was reading in the Bible, and he was talking about Noah, how he prepared Noah for the flood to come. And all the people on the outside, they're just living, drinking, marrying, doing what they're supposed to do, going, doing what they normally do, not thinking about nothing, not taking heed. I know me, I'm seeing somebody, what is he doing? He's he building a big boat over there. You know, nobody ain't taking heed. Nobody ain't trying to find out what was going on with Noah. You understand? They just kept doing what they was doing, kept living unruly. And then all of a sudden, God was like, Noah, it's time. Get on the ark. It's time. It ain't like the movie. It ain't the, the uh, movie when uh, one person snuck in. And ain't going to be no sneaking into heaven. You can't sneak in. You can't sneak in. You understand? You can only get in one way. That's the narrow way. It's up to you to get in that way. It's up to you to find God today. It's up to you to seek God today. It's up to you to live for God today. You understand? You know, I understand. You know, when you was out on the outside and you living for the world, you parted, everything was fun. You know, doing evil was fun. I can't lie to you. I love those days when I was living for the world and I was young and foolish and ignorant, staying up all night, drinking all day from morning to, to, to night, before I went to work, doing work, after work, partying. Can't wait to get out of work Friday so I can go to the club. First thing I did on Fridays was fill my trunk up with beer and alcohol and roll around, listen to my music. You know, I, one thing about it, I always been somebody who liked to ride around. But now I'm more focused on what God has me to do. I used to listen to certain type of music. And I'm not saying I don't listen to all types of music every once in a while. You understand? But it's like everything's changed now. I can listen to a worldly song and throw Christ in there. You know, when you start living for Christ, 
he makes a change in you that you can't even understand how it happened. You understand? Your, your whole life changes. No turning back. That's how you know you're a follower of Christ. Your life changes. You, things don't even look the same no more. You know what I'm saying? Things don't even feel the same no more. You're so more humble. You're not stressing over nothing. You're not worried about a thing as much as you used to. You understand? You ain't trying to worry about having as many friends as you have on Facebook. You ain't worried about pleasing people. You worry about pleasing God. And pleasing God is easier than pleasing people. If we really want to do the math, think about it. All you got to do is please one God. But in the world, there's a lot of people you got to please. But all you got to do is please one God. And that's real easy. You understand? <laughs> that's easier than trying to please this friend, this cousin, this brother, this sister, this mother, this father, this auntie, this uncle, this close friend, this third BF, BFF, this BFFF, you understand? That's just too much for me. You understand? Pleasing God is way easier than trying to please the world. You can't please everybody. You see, the Bible says so many things to let you know you can't please everybody. It said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's why when some people ask you sometimes, some things sometimes, you be like, you know what, hey, no, I can't do that. What? I thought we were friends. We are friends. I'm enough friend of you to say no. And I'm enough friend of you to say yes. You understand, sometimes. I ain't got to say yeah all the time. You understand? That's what's wrong with the world. I feel like you got to say yes all the time. Yes all the time. You understand? Go back to, I was talking about uh, the golden calf yesterday. If Aaron would have said no, he could have saved a lot of lives. Let me say that again. If Aaron would have said no to the golden calf, he could have saved a lot of lives. Think about that. Think about how, how many times a no can save somebody. Utilize righteous judgment. You understand? Like I said, you ain't here to please people. You're here to do your best to save souls. You can't save them, but you can lead them to the person who saves them. That's why don't get, don't beat yourself up. Sometimes I know it's the best answer you can give somebody. You know what I'm saying? It was hard for me to learn the word no. It was hard at one point in time. Now it ain't so hard. <laughs> I ain't saying it because I'm on the word about myself. I'm saying it because it's a reason the word no is in the dictionary. It's a reason. You know, sometimes you pray to God, and guess what answer he's going to give you sometimes? Nothing. He's going to give you a yes, or he'll give you a no. What's wrong with that? You got a mother or a father in this world. Sometimes your parents are going to be like, no. And sometimes your parents are going to be like, yes. Righteous judgment. Righteous judgment. You know, if you say yes to your child all the time to everything, you're going to spoil them. Let me say that again. You're going to spoil them. And God knows this. God's been a father for a long time. So he knows how to utilize that yes. And that no. Only difference is between your earthly father and your heavenly father. He can tell you no. And you still can go out and do it. But he told you no. So that's failure to listen to instruction. You understand? Most time when your earthly mother or father tell you no, you ain't going to do it. But they right there in your face. You see, with God, he gives you a choice. He gives you an answer. Then he gives you a choice to make. It's up to you to follow what he told you to do. You understand? Like, uh, like put it like this, when Jesus sent his disciples, like, no, go not into the way of the Gentiles. At one point in time, he said, go not in the way to the Gentiles, but go into the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. Look for my lost sheep. Don't go, don't go this way. He told them. He even told them not to go into Asia some, at one point in time. You understand? Jesus gives instruction that say, don't do this too. You understand? Throughout the Bible, it's telling you a lot of things not to do. And it's telling you a lot of things to do. Consider that a yes and a no. You can do this, but you don't suppose to do that. You can do this, but you don't suppose to do that. You know, uh, I, I love G.I. Joe growing up. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. You understand? G.I. Joe. You understand? Morals. TV shows in the day taught, taught morals. In this day and age, there's no morals in nothing. There's no morals. Everything is over sin. 
You know what I'm saying? Everything just based off sinful nature now. You understand? It is. Think about it. Think about it. But it's all good. As long as you got Christ, you can see past the sin. You can see past the sin. You can see past it. It's not going to affect you as much as it used to when you live for the world. You understand? Because you're trying to do what's pleasing to God. You know, you're not going to make the same mistakes you made over and over and over again when you live for the world. You see, that's why you come to God. So you don't sin no more. He said, nothing is impossible. He said, all, like trying to do things your own way, it's impossible to please God. But through God, you can do anything. Just think about that. The things you can't do when you ain't wasn't living for God, you can do when you start living for Him because He's going to help you. He's going to help you get through anything that you're going through in this world, things you think you never could make it through. You understand? You know, like sometimes it's, it's even people in your circle, you know, you praying, you praying, you trying to wonder why a change ain't taking place in your life. I'm going to go back to Noah again. You try to wonder why that change can't take place in your life. I'm going to go back to Lot again. You're going to try to wonder why change can't take place in your life. Let's go back to Egypt again. You try to wonder why change can't take place in your life. Because everybody can't go where you go. Some of your blessings are waiting right there for you. But God waiting for you to cut some people off. Some cut some things off in your life. You see, God had to take the children out of Egypt to bless them. He had to take Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah to watch over him. He had to take Abraham away from his family, away from the home of his fathers to give him what he wanted to give him. How many times you see that happen in the Bible? You got to go away from some things. You got to do away with some things. So get used to a no sometimes. You understand? I don't want you over there. I got a land plan planned out for you. All you got to do is listen to me. I'm trying to lead you from Egypt. But you know, a lot of people didn't want to leave Egypt. They wanted to go back. I, it was better off when I was working for Pharaoh, breaking my back every day. But the thing is, we all complain and say stupid things. You understand? And Proverbs, you're talking about, don't never think about the former days were better than the days you got now. Because in reality, you don't even know what God got planned for you ahead. But you know, if you pray, you, you got a petition that God's going to give you what you ask for according to his will. So in reality, you already know what God has got planned for you. You just got to believe it. You asking God to give you that great job, you got it if you believe. You see, that's the thing. That's that faith. It's believing in things not yet seen. You believe in it so you can get it. Like a Christian, if you believe in your heart and soul, that you're going to make it to heaven. God going to make a way for you to make it there. Think about that. You know you're going. If you believe. But if you're doubtful. If you don't know if heaven is for real. or If you don't believe heaven is real. And you got a double mind. You might not make it there. Because you truly don't believe there is a heaven. Think about it. You got to believe what you don't see. You got to believe in the spiritual realm. You understand? There's a lot of Christians this day that don't believe in demons and angels. Wow. <sighs> Let me go back to the story of Saul. The story of Saul. Jesus was telling you a certain thing. I mean, the Bible, God was telling you certain things not to do. Necromancing was something God said, don't even do this stuff. Don't fool with people that do it, right? So after Saul lost favor in the sight of the Lord, after Saul lost favor in the sight of the Lord, he was trying to get uh, information. He was trying to figure out if God's going to change the plan. Is God's going to turn back to him and favor him once more? So Saul dressed up in disguise and went to see a necromancing woman. And he asked the lady, hey, I need you to uh, raise Sam, Saul, I mean Samuel from the dead. I need to talk to Samuel in the spiritual realm. I need to talk to Samuel. I need to talk to him. And the lady was like, hey man, you know if I do this, you're going to kill me. He was like, y'all, Yo, you good, you good. Do it for me. So the woman summoned Samuel from the grave in the spirit. And Samuel rose up. Why have you done this? 
So he sought the dead in the spiritual realm. And you know what Samuel told him? The same thing I told you when I was alive, I'm going to tell you yet again. You and your sons are going to die by the sword. The mission ain't changed. You can seek the dead all you want. But if God told you something, it ain't finna change. You know what I'm saying? Rising me up, I speak for the Lord. And guess what? I'm gonna speak the same thing I spoke. Now let me go back to sleep. If you think the spiritual realm is fiction, you might want to read your Bible again. Who that was? Jacob wrestled with the angel all night long until he broke his hip. You understand? He, he wrestled with the spirit of the Lord. In the desert, you understand? And for a blessing, you understand? Y'all better open it up into the spiritual realm. Well, I can tell you some of my spiritual battles too. You understand? I've been snatched out the bed with demons. I've been in a bed that was shaking and vibrating and levitating. <laughs> you know, God told me the spirit first. I tell my wife a, a, a vision I had when I first came to God, before I came to God. When the whole room changed like I was in a movie, like I was in Constantine. The whole room changed to another room. And God showed me an open vision. You see, I believe in the spiritual and I believe in the physical. And you know what? Believing. Believing helps you. You understand? How you going to know how to fight an enemy you don't believe in? You understand? How can you cast out demons if you don't believe in demons? How can you get help from angels if you don't believe in angels? Do you understand? I'm just giving y'all some words this morning. Some things that help you along your walk. You understand? How can you? You got to believe. How can you believe in a, not believe in an invisible God? And believe in Jesus? Hmm. Hmm. How can you not believe in the Old Testament? And believe in the New Testament. How can you not believe in the New Testament and believe in the Old Testament? <sighs> All things work together for what? Those who love God. If you love God, you believe Him. You believe Him. You can't be double-minded. You know, most Christians, even churches, don't like to talk about the spiritual realm. They don't. They don't. But the thing is, the truth of the matter is, a lot of them never even went to no spiritual battles. Well, by the grace of God... I can honestly say I've been through some spiritual battles. I done seen some tales from the dark side. You understand? I can tell you some tales from the dark side, and I can tell you some tales from the bright side. You understand? I can tell you some tales of light and some tales of darkness. You know, I did the pair. I did the talk about Jesus talking about uh, you being fed with milk because you only see the good things. You understand? You only see... The things that you want to see. You know, you only talk about the good things. You only talk about the physical blessings that God can bestow upon you. But Jesus said, uh, you know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much more will I give the Holy Spirit something you can't see to you? You understand? You got to believe in the spiritual. Do you understand? You got to believe in it. But like I said, some people that focus on this part. Like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he cast out devils by devils. That makes no sense, man. That's what Jesus said. That makes no sense. Why would the devil use a devil? Why would, de why would the devil fight against himself, man? You know, that's how Jesus would talk to him. What? That don't even make no sense what you just said. Why would the devil cast himself out? <laughs> Spiritual realm. When Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, spiritual realm he was fighting against satan and the spirit you understand and afterward he's hungered now he needed some physical healing you understand he was hungry after he went through spiritual warfare you understand think about it people you got to believe in the spiritual realm from the lord comes your help where's the lord in the spiritual realm you can't see him you understand you can feel him well, you know how these scientists live. If I can't see it, I don't believe it. Well, my faith don't work that way. My faith works in believing in things I can't see. So I'm going to believe in angels. I'm going to believe in demons. I'm believing the fallen ones. He said back in the day, 
back in the day during the days of Noah, the sons of God saw the women of the world. They saw that they were beautiful and they took all the women of they chose and they slept with them. And there were giants in the earth at this time. Giants in the earth this time because the fallen ones left their domain and slept with earthly women. Spiritual. Okay, anybody know about Greek mythology? I do. I do. <laughs> God taught me this too. I was talking about I was raised up and I love Hercules. I love Hades. I love Zeus. I love all those things. Not knowing that God was showing me the truth as a youth. God was showing me the truth as a youth. I'm thinking these Greek gods were gods. But then I start reading my Bible. I'm like, wow, that story about sons of God sleeping with earthly women, it sounds kind of like what went on in Greek mythology. Sound like like when Zeus slept with that woman and made Hercules and made a giant, a strong, mighty man, the men of renown. <laughs> hey, people, truth is there. If you want it, you can get it. All these false gods, they ain't number fallen angels. Zeus, fallen angel. Hades, fallen angel. All of them, fallen. The Bible talks about them. Only reason I know that because I studied it myself. You know, I, I guess God wanted me to know this. Hey, let the people know that all these false gods out there ain't number fallen angels. You know, Zeus is the lightning bolt. You know, who's the lightning bolt another sign of? Satan. You understand? I beheld Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That is a spiritual realm, people. Spiritual. I don't know where I'm going with this, but hey, I'm just letting the spirit use me. You understand? Think about this, man. If there, they say there's such thing as water demons, Poseidon. But anyway, <laughs> let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let me educate y'all some things about the evil in this world. You understand? There are spiritual things going on that people don't want to believe. You know, I didn't... I believe I didn't believe I thought Greek mythology is just some jokes, but it's real. You know why? You know why it's real? Because the Bible says it's real. Let me tell y'all something. When you start believing in God, you better open your mind up to believe anything. You better open your mind up to believe anything. If you want your blessings, you want to. You better open your mind up to believe anything. When somebody come to you, when your child come up to you, waking up at night, something's in the room with me. Don't tell them. Oh, it's nothing, son. Just go back to sleep. Just because you can't see it, that don't mean nothing ain't in the room with them. You better learn to pray. I ain't gonna tell somebody to go back to sleep when they scared out of their mind. You understand? Because they see something. They feel something in the room with them. And you as a parent, you need to tell your kids the truth. You understand? Tell them, God's going to protect you from any darkness. Don't worry about that. From the Lord comes your help, son. You know, no evil thing is going to hurt you in the name of Jesus. How can you rebuke a demon if you don't believe in a demon? You understand? When I was younger, when I first found Christ, I'm going to tell you a story about my daughter. My daughter could not sleep. And I had just became a newfound Christian. And God's opening me up to the spiritual realm. I already fought some demons and things of such like that. My daughter came to me one morning. And she was like, she was scared. She was probably about three years old. Three. You understand? She was scared. She was talking to me. Uh, she was like, there's something in the room. And she was like, I was like, what's going on? She was like, at night, something comes down and, and it scares me. It talks to me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, but I'm already believing. Because I know what the spiritual things are. So my daughter was like, I was like, draw what you saw. I said, draw, show me what you saw, Jalicia. Lulu. I like, show me what you saw. She drew a, a figure with black wings. 
I like black wings. That's not what I'm used to hearing about. I, everybody so draw drawings with white wings, you know. <laughs> I'm like black wings. Like it was saying, come see me every night. I like. What does it tell you to do? And she imitated what the angel told her to do. She said, pray. She said, do like this. Bow your head and pray. Wow. An angel came to my daughter and told her to pray, and I believe it. You know why? Because I believe in the spiritual. You understand? I believe in the spiritual realm. You understand? People watch these movies, they talk about it as myth. Like people don't want to believe in witchcraft and sorcery. The Bible talks about all these things. In Egypt, when Moses showed his wonders, that God to when God showed his wonders through Moses, guess what the sorcerers and the people did? They made their staff turn into snakes too. Sorcery is real. I believe it. You understand? Am I afraid of it? No. But I got to believe it. I got to tell you about it. You understand? You know, I've been in this world for 38 years, going on 39 years, and I've never been to New Orleans. Never been there. Never felt the need to go over there and party. But I know growing up, I used to hear this. You know, that's a lot of voodoo over there. A lot of voodoo in New Orleans. You understand? I didn't know what voodoo really was. I knew it was some form of witchcraft, but I know one thing. God kept me away from New Orleans. You understand? When you was young, your parents told you things like that. Don't forget about it. Don't brush it off like it's fiction. Don't brush it off like it's fake. Believe in these things. You understand? You got to know how to fight the enemy. You got to have your discernment between good and evil. So if a witch standing you dead in your face, by the power of God, you can know if she's a witch or not. You understand? <laughs> I'm just being real with y'all people. You know? I'm just being real with y'all. Some of the people in your circles are darker than Lucifer himself. <laughs> and you wonder why your blessings ain't coming. Because you got that hag riding your back at night. You understand? Who, who experienced that? Sleep paralysis, what the world call it. Who experienced that when you can't sleep and you can't move? Well, that's just something that happens between sleep and this. Whatever. I know what I felt. I know when I feel like a presence is on me. You understand? You know? But now I'm trying to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I don't have to worry about that Hank, that hag, that witch riding my back. You understand? When I was younger, I fought a lot of spiritual things as a kid. And you better learn to listen to your children. Children are more spiritual. You know, children believe a lot of things. The enemy is after the children. If he can get the children to believe certain things right now and lead them to the dark side right now, they're more open to believe those things. You understand? So right now is the best time to reach your child and teach them good and bad. So when they get older, they know it. You're teaching them. You understand? The milk phase, stop trying to sugarcoat everything. The milk phase is past. It's time to tell people good and evil. It's time to tell people yes and no. It's time to open yourself up to the spiritual realm. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Some things you got to see in order to grow. Let me say that again. Some things you got to see in order to grow. You ain't got to believe me. You can say I'm crazy all you want. I'm going I'm to tell you like my mom used to tell me. I'm going to be a fool. And I'm going to be a fool for Christ. Me too. I'm going to be a fool for Christ. Everywhere I go, I put my cross on first. Before I leave the house, I put my cross on first. Because I'm a follower of Christ. Christ talks about it. I'm going to believe it. He talk about angels all the time. You talk about devils all the time. So it's, I guess it's fake. Uh, I guess you want to believe some of what Jesus says and not all of it. But everybody love this part. God give you everything you ask for. And then Jesus flipped it. He gave you the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Do you want that? Do you want the Holy Spirit? Do you want it? He ain't talking about no new car all the time. You understand? Spiritual things. Seek things above first. Then all else will be added to you. So if you can't believe in the spiritual, how can you expect to receive anything in the material? I hope this touched somebody's soul in a special way. Open your eyes, people. Have a blessed day.